Today we're going to talk about section 2.6, the last section in chapter 2. We're talking about solving equations. Now, before we have dealt with equations just a little bit, but we have never solved them. So I'm going to give you some nice techniques of solving these. These you are going to carry with you throughout the rest of this course and even throughout every math class you ever take is doing solving equations this way. So if you're keeping track, we're on 2.6. Solving equations. The first thing we need to talk about is what an equation even means. Because most of the time in this class, up till now, we've been dealing with expressions. So when we talk about equation and expressions, there's got to be a difference there. Here's the difference between equations and expressions. There's really only one difference. It, it seems like a minor difference, but it's kind of a big deal for us. Expressions, the things we've been dealing with so far in this class, typically, and equations, are both mathematical constructs. I mean, you, you make both of them with addition, subtraction. You have some numbers up there, variables maybe. But here's the difference between them. Equations have something called an equal sign. They have the equals. Expressions don't. That's the only difference. Other than that, they look very, very similar. So when we're talking about an equation, equations have an equal sign. So equations have that equal sign. Expressions don't. Let me give you some examples of, of what we're talking about here. Here's something that we've kind of seen in this class before. Maybe you've distributed and, or I'm sorry, you've, you've combined some like terms or something like that, and you have 4x minus, 4y minus 7. Do you have an equal sign up there? No. So you have a 4y, you have the minus 7, that's great. But if there's no equal sign, the best we can call this is an expression. It's not an equation. Listen carefully. You cannot solve expressions. All you can do is manipulate them. We can't say how much y equals right there. Can you look at that and go, oh, y equals 2? No. Not really, because it's not, it's not equal to anything, right? You can't ever check to see if you're right. All you can do is, we've heard this word before, hope you pay attention, you can evaluate expressions. I could say, can you plug in 3 to that? Could you do that? Yeah. You could evaluate it, no problem. But you can't ever solve it. With equations, we're going to find out that we can solve these things. This is an expression. Another example of an expression would be something like um, negative 8 minus 2x. That's another expression. There's no equal sign. Again, you can't solve that. All you could do is evaluate it if I gave you a number. I would say evaluate this for x equals negative 4. Or evaluate this for y equals 3 in this example. But we can't ever solve those. Now, equations, on the other hand, they're stuff that have, they're those, those expressions, but then they tack on an equal sign and have an equal there. That's an equation. Looks like an expression, right? If I cover that up, if I cover that up, that is an expression. But as soon as we go equals to something, that's an equation. It has the equal sign. And we're going to be able to solve this towards the end of our, our section here. Uh, maybe when we get a little bit further than that. But we'll, we'll be able to solve this at some point in this class. So what is the difference between equations and expressions again? What do, what do we have there? One has an equal sign. One That's one. it. That's the only difference between them. Uh, we could even do this. You can have the numbers on the other side. 3 equals x plus 5. We're going to find out that we can solve equations. We can only manipulate and uh, evaluate our expressions. Okay, I just said we can solve equations. Well, what that means is we're going to be able to find a solution. What I want to do is explain again one more time. We've had this once in here. Explain what a solution really is. So when I say solution, when I say solution, what we mean by that is a value that when I plug it into an equation, makes the equation true. A solution is a value that when I plug it into the equation 
makes a true statement. We'll say a value that makes an equation true. Let me give you just a couple of examples here. Is negative 2 a solution, I abbreviated there, is negative 2 a solution to 3y plus 1 equals 3? What I'm asking you is if I plug that number in, does it make a true statement? One way we can do that is to evaluate an equation. We say let's take that negative 2, let's plug it in for our variable. In our case, what is our variable up here, ladies and gentlemen? <coughs> so if I plug that into y, we're going to see if it makes a true statement. So how we do this the first time, we do, does the 3 change? No. no. <coughs> Does the y change? Yes. yes. Two parentheses, negative two. Good, yeah, I like the parentheses because that says I'm multiplying by a negative, I'm not subtracting. Then this plus one doesn't change, the equals doesn't change, and the three doesn't change. Also, one more thing I like to do when you're checking to see if something is a solution, we, we're not quite sure yet, right? Because we have to do the math on this thing. Put a little question mark up here, signifying that you're, you're questioning whether this is going to be true or not, and at the end we're going to make that determination. Does that make sense to you? kind of questioning you right now. So let's do the math together. How much is uh, 3 times negative 2? Very good. Notice how we're just using some techniques of order operations on expressions that we did. Now we just have equations. And we're still checking if that's true. How much is negative 6 plus 1? Good. Is that a true statement? Is negative 5 equal to 3? Then what you do, if you check this, and it comes out that, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense. What we do is put a line through the equal sign, saying that's not equal, and then we answer the question. Is negative 2 a solution to this e equation? No. The answer is no. No, definitely not. So we're going to put that. No. no. Why don't you try this one on your own? We'll take the same number. Is negative 2 a solution to this equation? So again, take that negative 2, plug that in there, and do your order of operations on the left-hand side. Is negative 2 a solution to negative 4x minus 3 equals 5? Firstly, do I have an equation or an expression here, ladies and gentlemen? Definitely, because it has an equal sign. That way we can check to see if something is a solution. If you have an expression, you can't even answer this question right now. All you'd be able to do is plug it in and evaluate it. That, that's the difference there. So in our case, we say, all right, let's go ahead and take our negative 2. We'll plug it into our variable, which in this case is x. We're going to say the negative 4, does the negative 4 change at all? No. However, the x becomes negative 2. Now remember that negative 4x means negative 4 times x. So we are multiplying there. And then we're going to have that minus 3. So all I'm doing is replacing x with negative 2 equals 5. How many people plugged it in just like that? Excellent job. Now let's see if our order of operations have paid off. We'll do. Multiplication first, we're going to get how much? Positive. We're questioning this. We're seeing if it's true or not. A minus 3. 
That's the one who's just testing you. You passed. <laughs> and is it true? Yes. yes. Yeah. So we don't have to put the cross the line through it because this is a true statement. We put yes, negative two is a solution. It means it makes a true statement out of this. Now this is all fine and good, right? We we can tell whether something is a solution or not just by plugging it into our equation and seeing if we have a true statement. But typically we don't want to always be just checking random numbers, right? We want a way to systematically solve equations so that instead of just checking numbers, we can go straight to here and find the solution to this problem instead of randomly guessing. Are you with me on this? So what we're going to do now is we're almost there. We're going to talk about one property that's going to let us help, help us out with this, and then we're going to start actually solving equations. The one property we have to talk about is the addition property of equality. Here's what it, that sounds really fancy, right? The addition property of equality. It's a really simple statement, and you guys are gonna be like, yeah, duh, no kidding. I mean, why, do, why are we doing this? This property, though, lets us solve all your equations. There, there's two properties. This is the first one that lets you solve your equations. And here's basically what it says. How much is six plus eight? So you'd say that's a true statement, right? 6 plus 8 equals 14. Is that a true equation for you? Yes. Okay. Here's what the addition property of equality says. Very simple thing. It says if I add the same number to both sides of my equation, the equation is going to be equal still. The equation is going to be equal. It's very much like a, it's like a balance beam. Uh, the addition property of equality says, or equations in general said, what you do to one side of your equation, you have to do to the other. If you don't, it's like, have you ever seen a teeter-totter? They don't have them very often anymore, but you know what I'm talking about, like the whole teeter-totter? Mm -hmm. Do you know what teeter-totter is? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a thing, thing that goes like that. It used to <laughs> go like this. You know. Well, I used to be kind of a fat kid when I was younger, so I swear I was like 160 pounds in sixth grade or something like that. Sure. Yeah, I swear I was really <laughs> short, kind of, and then I just kind of, kind of grew. <laughs> Anyway, um, if I was on videotape back then, it, the camera would have added like a hundred pounds. Like it was, it was big. But anyway, but what on your teeter totter? Here's how teeter totters work. You have this sort of plank, right? A very simple teeter totter. In the middle of this plank, you have a balance point. That's like the symbol for for an equation. Uh, an equation has to be balanced. And when we get our equations, they are automatically balanced for us. That's certainly balanced, isn't it? Yeah. We got 14 here. I've got 14 there. What would happen to a teeter-totter if I put something on this side and I didn't put something on this side? What, what's going to happen? It's going to go down. Yeah, so I'm a I was a big guy back then. And so I would sit on a teeter-totter and all of a sudden it would crash to the ground, right? We'd have to add the same amount of weight on the other side to get it balanced back again. You with me? If we added too much, I'd be up in the air. If we didn't add enough, they'd be up in the air. And that's, that's how your equations work as well. It's very much like a teeter-totter. What we want to do is keep our teeter-totter, our, our balance, level all the time. And the way we do that is if you had, if you had your, your balance beam and you took weight off at the same time, or you put weight on at the same time, equal weights, is that teeter-totter ever going to move? And that's what we want. Because if we keep our teeter-totter not doing this, then our equation is going to be equal all the way down and we'll end up getting our solution at the end. Does that make sense to you? Okay. That's the idea. So the addition property of equality says basically this. It says, what you do to one side by addition, you must also do to the other side by addition. And if you do that, you will have an equation that is also true. For instance, let me give you some, a, a real life example here. So you have 6 plus 8 equals 14. <coughs> Check it out. If I add 3 here, am I supposed to take away 3 or add 3 over here? Add 3. Add 3, add three OK. And I add 3 here. This, by the way, this is like your teeter-totter center. This is your balance point. What you do to one side, you have to do to the other side. If you do it twice over here, that, that would be a bad thing. So what we do on the left, we also do on the right-hand side of our equation. Let's see what this works out to. How much is the right-hand side? 17. How much is the left-hand side? 17. It's still the same thing, and that should make sense. I mean, if you're adding the same number to both sides of your equation, you are going to have the same value if they initially were equal. That's the idea behind the addition property of equality. Uh, a very kind of weird name or a long name for something that, that's not too hard to understand, I hope. How many people were okay with that? Very good. 
So basically, in layman's terms, what this says is that you can add the same number to both sides of your equation. I'm also going to add a little, little extra statement on here. I know it's the addition property of equality, but we're also going to find out that this works with subtraction as well. So we're going to say you can add or subtract the same number from both sides of your equation. Let's do a few examples on how this applies to some equations. Because right now this is like, well, well duh, 6 plus 8 equals 14 already. How does this help us out with something like, like that? And we're going to get to those eventually. Um, but right now we're going to start kind of nice and basic here. So let's say I gave you an equation. x minus 4 equals negative 1. And we want to solve that. Listen, here's the idea about solving an equation. Your ultimate goal is you want to get the variable all by itself. Nothing else around it, just variable equals number. That's what you want. Are you with me on this? You want just the variable by itself. What's our variable? X. Is it by itself on one side of the <coughs> equation right now? Yes. By itself means there's nothing else over there. No. No. What else is over there? Minus 4. Minus four. That minus four, that's something we need to get rid of. So our idea here is to isolate, isolate means get by itself, isolate the variable. That means you're going to do undo everything around that variable. the variable, that means we're going to undo everything around it. Let's look back at our equation. What we need to know is that the equation comes automatically balanced. Just like your balance beam that I erased over here. Just like this thing. It comes balanced initially. How we show that balance? Put a vertical line right through that equals. What that does, it's kind of a graphic organizer. You might have seen that before if you've ever had equations. It's just a graphic organizer that says, if I put something on the left-hand side of that line, I have to put exactly the same thing on the right. I'll repeat that because some of you are already zoning out in here. If you do the same, if you do one thing to the left-hand side that's on the left-hand side of this line, you must do exactly the same thing to the right side of this line. Not your head if you're with me on that. The exact same thing. So we've got to go ahead and say, okay, our variable's here. You already said the minus 4 is next to the variable. I need to get rid of that. So we need to understand what undoes minus 4. What's the opposite of minus 4? Positive 4. 4, or instead of the, op instead of the opposite of 4, well, we're talking about the opposite of minusing 4. What's the opposite of minusing 4? Plus 4. Adding 4, that's right, exactly. If we add 4 to this, Is the plus 4 going to undo the minus 4? Absolutely. Yeah, what we need to know over here is that addition is going to undo subtraction. Subtraction is going to undo addition. Addition undoes subtraction, subtraction undoes addition. 
Hey, is this good enough? You just add four to the left hand side, is that okay? Both sides. That's why we drew that line right there. What I do to the left hand side, I have to do to the right hand side. If you keep that down, you can do almost darn near anything to an equation and still equal. Almost anything. Uh, you can add, subtract, multiply, divide. You can take square roots, take the powers. You can do all sorts of stuff uh, to both sides of the equation and still equal. We're just learning about the addition right now. So we can add four here. If you add four here, what's on the board? Am I supposed to subtract four over here? No. No, what we do is we keep it even. If you're going to put four pounds on the left-hand side of the scale, you have to put four pounds on the right-hand side of the scale to keep that thing balanced. On our teeter-totter, if you, listen, if that doesn't make sense to you, if you're like, oh my gosh, why are we adding four here and not subtracting here? Think about your balance. If you add four pounds to this side and you take off four pounds from this side, you're going to definitely go like this, aren't you? So if we wanted to keep it level, if you add four pounds over here, you also have to add four pounds over there. That keeps it balanced. It's like putting two kids of the same weight on the teeter-totter at the same time. It's not going to move. If you put a kid on here and take a kid off here, it's going to go up in the air. It's not balanced anymore. Kids going to go flying. Ha, 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 ha. Anyway, let's keep going on this thing. What is our minus four plus four? How much does that give you? Eight. Eight? Oh, my. That wouldn't work very well. Zero. Yeah, if we look at that, we have minus 4 here and we're adding 4 to it. You can do order operations. If, if, you're, if you're not seeing this very well, you can write it out just like we did those problems before. You change this to a plus negative. Look at that. Different signs, subtract, that's 0, you get x. This does work the same way that we just, we just learned. Now, you don't have to show this every time. That's OK. Uh, in fact, you can just do addition rule right from here. I hope that you're seeing this. If you just did, if you covered up that x and just looked at these two numbers with the sign, with the sign, minus 4 or negative 4, positive, plus 4 or positive 4, are the signs the same or different? Different. You would subtract. 4 minus 4 is 0. Yeah. That goes away. How much are you going to be left with on the left-hand side? Okay. It still equals. That line means equals. Let's do the same thing on the right-hand side of our equation. We have negative 1 plus 4. Negative 1 plus 4. We're adding. We're going to be using those addition rules. What's negative 1 plus 4? They have different Three. signs. You would? 3 to the Good. Sign Three. a bigger number. Great. Three. Most people put a box around the answer just to make sure that you, you have the solution listed somewhere like that. Tell me something. Can you check if that is a valid solution? Can you check that? Yeah. How? Yeah. If you plug that back in, just like we did over there, that's why we did that first. You can always check to see if your solution works. And we should be doing that, that, that at this level. If you plug that in, 3 minus 4, 3 plus negative 4, that's negative 1. That does work out. That is a solution. Would you nod your head feel all right with what we're doing so far? Yes? No? Okay. Iffy sometimes. We're going to do a whole bunch more examples. Uh, we're going to start building these up little by little until we get to stuff that looks like that and beyond. Okay, so first of all, ladies and gentlemen, let's do this problem together. Is this an equation or an expression? Equation. Definitely. It's got an equal sign. Very good. What's your variable? Y. y. Is there anything surrounding that variable that you need to get rid of? Yeah, So we're going to draw our line. That signifies that we have two sides. That line goes always underneath the equal sign, saying what I do to the left-hand side, I also have to do to the right-hand side. Now, the question is, since you've already identified the variable and you've identified something needs to be removed, how do you remove that minus 6? What's the opposite of minus 6? Good. And so we know if we do something to the left-hand side, we must also do it to the right-hand side. So we add 6 here. That's going to remove the minus 6. Those things are opposite. They're called inverses. Inverses undo each other. And that means we also have to not subtract 6 from the right, but add it. This line must look identical. 
must have the same thing on the left and the right. That's the only way you keep a teeter-totter or a balance even. On the left-hand side, what are we going to be left with, folks? Perfect. On the right-hand side, we can use a different addition rules. They have different signs. Sign the bigger number, you're going to get how much? Four. Again, could you check your work? Yes. Plug that in there. Four minus six is certainly negative two. So at least we should be checking that mentally. Okay, we've got an equation. Our variable is now x. Let's look at this one, though. Will addition work to get rid of that plus 3 that we need to remove? No. Here we've got our line saying we're equal. Minus three. Yeah, why, why minus 3? Because it's the opposite. Okay, good. So we're just trying to undo things. So we're looking for what's called an inverse operation, something that will undo what's already there. Here we add it because we add minus 6. The opposite of minus 6 is plus 6. Here, since we have the plus 3, we're trying to remove the 3 because the x is what we're trying to isolate. We're going to subtract 3 from both sides. What's going to be on the left-hand side of our equation? X. On the right-hand side? Four. Still check the word. Four plus three is seven. We know we got that one right. We're going to go quickly through a few more of these just to really get the handle on this stuff, and then I'll let you go and do a couple on your own, okay? First thing, it's an equation. Draw the line under the equal sign that's keeping it equals. What's our variable up here, ladies and gentlemen? Y. What are we trying to get rid of? The 12. Good. How are we going to get rid of that 12? Good. So we're subtracting 12, not just from one side, but anytime you do something to an equation, we do it from both sides. So since this is plus 12, we're going to subtract 12 from both sides. On the left-hand side, what are we left with? Y. That's what we want, right, on the left. That's why we did that whole step, is to get rid of the 12. That's why we did that. On the right-hand side, we've got 3, we've got minus 12. Remember, since you are adding or subtracting, you are going to be using the addition rule. I, I hope you write that down, or at least have that in your head. When you add or subtract, you are going to use the addition rules. Are you with me? Because pretty soon we're going to be using addition and subtraction and then multiplication division. I can't have you get those rules confused. Okay, right now we're using addition rules because we're getting rid of addition subtraction. Are you with me? That's why we're using addition rules. Adding subtracting. How much are you going to get here? Nine. Negative nine. We certainly have negative nine on that, for sure. Hey, is it still going to work if I have an equation that looks kind of backwards? where I have a variable on the right-hand side rather than the left-hand side. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. It's still an equation, right? So we still have this line. I still have a variable. What's my variable? X. And what do I need to get rid of around the X? One. Yeah. One. How do I get rid of that plus one? Negative one. Okay. We're, we're subtracting. So I, I'd like you to said not negative one, minus, minus, minus one. Minus one. We are subtracting here. So minus one. If I subtract one from the right, I have to also subtract one from the left. On the right-hand side, here's what's going to happen. We've got a plus 1, we've got a minus 1. Plus 1, minus 1, that's going to give us 0. That's why we do that step. We're going to be left with x on the right-hand side. On the left-hand side, again, we're using addition rules because we're adding or subtracting. What are we going to have? Very good. Yeah, add them together, keep the common sign. That's addition rule. Not every answer is negative 9, I promise. They change. Oh yeah, top ones are different. <laughs> Not every answer is either 4 or negative 9, okay? They change. You know, a lot of people are just fine on these ones. I do want to show you a couple more that sometimes get a little people, get people not, got, not get little people, just people a little confused. I said little people. <laughs> They're just fine on this. 2 equals 8 plus z. It's still an equation. 
What's our variable here? Z. People get a little confused on what to do here. How in the world, or what do we need to get rid of, and how do we do it? What do we need to get rid of here? The A. Okay. Now, the eight's next to the Z. It's a, is it a positive eight or a negative eight? Positive. Okay. How are we going to get rid of a positive eight that's being added to Z, or that Z is being added to? That's going to work. If I subtract eight, that's great. That's exactly what we want. Positive eight minus eight, that's going to as long as I do it to both sides, I'll be set. I'll be fine. On the right-hand side, I will certainly get... What's on the right-hand side? Zero. So zero plus Z. <coughs> we would get the zero, right? But then when we add Z, we, we get our Z. Mm -hmm. So you don't need to show me the zero unless you want to. I mean, eight minus eight, yeah, you're going to get zero. But we can just make sure we know that is Z. On the left-hand side, how much are we going to get? Six. Great, that's fantastic. Begin reason addition rules. Different signs, subtraction, big number. Certainly an equation. We'll put our line going right down the middle of that equal sign. What I need you to tell me is firstly, what's our variable? X. Okay. And is there anything around x? Okay. So you see we have negative three plus x. The question is, how do I get rid of negative three? Well, some people have this question. Why aren't we subtracting 3? Because look it. I mean, should that be, isn't that a plus? Why aren't we subtracting the 3 over here? And the answer is, what you can do is you can subtract the negative 3. I want to show you this one time. I'll never show this again, but I want to show you one time. You can subtract the negative 3. So if you take away the negative 3, subtract the negative 3, what's minusing a negative actually do for us? Positive. Do you remember going through that stuff? Yeah. Said, oh, okay. This, what would this, what this would be? I'm gonna write down here so you see it. This would be negative three plus x minus negative three. That's negative three plus x plus three. That plus three and that minus three, those will be gone. That's what we're doing here. So instead of showing all this work, we can think of it as, okay, how do we get rid of? Do you need that? Instead of showing all that work and saying, okay, we, we can subtract negative 3, if we understand that subtracting negative 3 is the same thing as adding 3, adding 3 to both sides will work for us. So really what we need to show on this problem, instead of subtracting negative 3, we think of it, okay, what's the opposite of negative 3? We're going to add 3. Now you'll see the addition rules work, right? We have a minus three, or a negative three, and we have a plus three. Negative three plus three it gives us zero, that gets rid of the three. On the left hand side, we have x. On the right hand side, how much do we have? Negative one. Negative one. And we're good. All right, I'd like to give you a few to try on your own. I'll be walking around. If you do need some help, let me know. I'll be happy to help you.
had some people leave. Some of them sent us around again. I don't remember any names yet. Um, just want to call them next to your next to your name. This one. Just put your name again, okay? Say it again. Agents, we're looking for the variable and just getting rid of the thing that's around that variable. Right now, these are all just single steppers. By the end of this class, we're going to have some very, very complicated uh, equations that we can work on. But it's not going to be a problem because we're just going to build up from what we know. Let's look at the first one. So we certainly have equations on all these examples. That's why we have those vertical lines under the equal sign. Just keeping them balanced to show that we have that. On the left-hand side, we have our x, and we're trying to get rid of a minus 7. How do you get rid of that minus 7, everybody? Great, so that wasn't everybody, but whatever, I'll take it. So add 7, we do that to both sides, keeping that equal. On the left-hand side, we get x. That's why we do that step, is to get rid of that minus 7. On the right-hand side, we have 2 plus 7 gives us how much? 9. That's it. How many got 9? Fantastic. Did you check it in your head, at least, to make sure it works? Good for you. That's fantastic. Next one, our variable's on the different side, but this still works the same way. As long as we do the same thing to both sides of our equation, we're good to go. So here with our plus 13, what gets rid of our plus 13? So we're going to minus 13 on both sides. On the right-hand side, that gets rid of our 13s. We get t. On the left-hand side, we're using addition rule because we're adding and subtracting. All we have to do is look at the signs, apply the addition rule. We see there's two different signs. We're going to add them together, keep the common sign, and hopefully you've got negative 28. Did you get negative 28? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Here's something very similar. We subtract 14 from both sides. Yep, add because we have the same thing going on, the same sign. So we're going to add those together. How much? Are you guys starting to really get a handle on the addition rule? Mm -hmm. Good, I hope so. That's fantastic. Okay, next up. What do we do here? Subtract 15. So we're going to subtract on both sides, of course. Mm -hmm. Am I going to get zero? We need negative 30. Good, yeah. We don't, let, don't fall into that trap of just saying the same thing and giving zero. That really does need to be negative 30. And lastly, we have negative 7 equals negative 8 plus x. What do we need to get rid of? Good. How do we get rid of that negative 8? Positive 8. Perfect. Again, you could think of it as subtracting negative 8 from both sides. You can get rid of it that way. But on the other hand, we can just say, OK, the opposite of negative 8 is positive 8. Let's go ahead and add that. Because when we know, when we add the opposite of a number, it goes to 0. So we add 8. We make sure we do that to both sides. We go addition rule over here. How much are we going to get? One. Oh, Be careful. positive. Yeah, because they're different signs. We'll subtract, but we keep the sign of the bigger number. And again, you can check your work on all these equations. How many people got at least three of them right? At least three. That means three or more. How many people got all five right? Good for you. That's fantastic. Very, very good job. Now, the last thing we're going to talk about today Remember, I told you we're going to start building these things up and building them up. Is there ever a case where you have more than one variable in the same equation? Yes. All the time. <laughs> All the time. Now, what I'm, I'm not talking about two different variables like x and y. Okay? You get those in later classes. That's called a system of equations. You need two equations to solve for two variables. You need three equations to solve for three variables. Four equations. For, you see the pattern, right? So if you had five variables, you would need five equations to solve that. You use something called matrices to do that. It's pretty quick. Uh, but for, for us, we're going to stick with one type of variable, but maybe you see it more than one time. For instance,
9x equals 8x plus 4. Are they both going to have the same answer? Both x? Well, that's the whole idea, is that they need to, right? Because it's the same exact variable. So how in the world do you solve this if you have 9x equals 8x plus 4? How do you get that x by itself? Uh, subtract 4. That's the constant. That's good. We're going we're gonna to deal with the constant sooner or later. We're going to deal with it later, though. Yeah. Uh, we're going to deal with the variables first. We're going to deal with the variables first. Here's the idea. Hope you're listening, because uh, you've had some great ideas, but none of them have been right on the money yet, so I can see where we, we need this right now. <coughs> the idea is you have to get your variables on the same side first. You got to do that. Otherwise, right now there's no way to get this x by itself that we know of. And even if you did, you'd still have an x over here, right? Mm -hmm. Listen, listen. What we want to end up with is something that looks just like this, just like this, 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 and this, where you have a variable equals a number. What you don't want is a variable equals a variable. I mean, that's, that's not solved anything. That hasn't told you what x equals. Are you with me on this? So how in the world do we get these x's on one side? And the answer is we're, going to, we're still going to add or subtract. Just like we got rid of the minus 7 here and the plus 13 here, we can add or subtract anything you want, right? Anything, as long as you do it to both sides. Let me repeat that because some of you just weren't really, I can see in your eyes you haven't really got it. You can add or subtract anything you want, including variables, as long as you do it to both sides. You with me? So what we're going to do, we're going to look up here and go like that. I want to move my variables to the same side. I want you to locate the smaller of the variables. What's the smaller variable? A to what? X. Eight X. We're going to get rid of 8x. So what we're going to do, I'm going to write this note down. Please write this down as well. You are going to eliminate the smaller variable. You might be wondering, why, why do we do the smaller one? Won't any of them do? And the answer is, yeah, eventually it will. But if you eliminate the smaller one, you always keep your variable positive, And that's what we want. We want a positive variable. Do you get me? Eliminate the smaller one. It'll always be positive. So eliminate the smaller variable. Oh my gosh, how do I get rid of 8x? We're trying to get rid of positive 8x. What do I need to do? Subtract 8x. Let's do that. If I subtract 8x here, I must also subtract 8x from the left-hand side. Well, let's think about that. So it's always Variable? Always. Yes. If you have two variables, you eliminate the smaller one. That keeps your variable positive. Why? Because it keeps your variable positive. <laughs> That's why. Seriously. So you have a positive variable. Because um, later on, we don't want to deal with lots of negatives. So we want to keep positive if you can. And that's the way you do it. Give her the smaller one first. Hey, I'm going to show you more on this later as well. If you have nine x's and you take care of eight of them, you take away eight x's. How many x's do you have left? Yeah. yeah, typically, I mean, you can write one x, but you're never ever going to see it like that. Never in a math book. Because if when you write x, it implies there's only one of them anyway. So we have one x, nine x's minus eight x's gives you one x's. It's like having nine apples, you take away eight apples. You have one apples. You should have an apple. So we have one x. On the left hand side, 8 minus 8x minus 8x, that gives you the 0, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. What do we have left? 4. four. We just solved it. So Tanya, your, your, your answer is, yeah, the x is the same. In fact, if you plug that in, you're going to get 36. You're going to get 32 plus 4. 36 equals 32 plus 4. It's the same same thing. We're going to try more on this later. How many people understood what we talked about today? Exactly. That's really good, really good. <laughs> So when we deal with an equation like this, which of course is an equation because we have the equal sign up there. If it wasn't, it wasn't an equation, we wouldn't have the equal sign. We said we need to find a way to get all of our variables on one side because if we don't, we're not going to be able to solve this for, for x like we want to do. We want to isolate the variable, which in our case is x, and we see it twice. Do you remember what we did last time to get rid of one of these variables? Back to smaller. Sure. Now, someone asked, why, why do we subtract the smaller variable? Why don't we subtract the bigger variable? 
You do. And if we get negatives, that's harder to deal with. So what we do is we subtract or eliminate, I'll say eliminate, the smaller variable because what that's going to do is keep our variable positive. We don't have to divide by negative. That makes things a little bit easier for us. So there's no way we can solve this like some of the first examples we learned of yesterday. We still draw our line down the middle of our equation stating that we do have an equation. It has to be equal on both sides. What we do to one side, we have to do to the other side. Are you guys with me on this today? Yes. Let's wake it up. I know it's Friday, but we, we only got a little bit of time left. So when we look at this, what is a smaller of the two variables that you can see? Let's subtract that from both sides. The way we're going to get rid of the smaller variable is either by addition, if it's a minus, or subtraction if it's positive like it is in this case. That's the only way you can move the smaller variables by addition or subtraction. Nod your head if you're with me on that. So here we go. Okay, smaller one is step next. Let's go ahead and subtract it over here. Now if I subtract it from one side, I must also subtract it from the other side. It's got to be the same. So this level, whenever you do something, has to be identical on both sides of that line. That's why I put the line there, saying what goes on one side has to go on the other side. On the right-hand side, this side, what am I going to be left with? Four. Four. Good. We got rid of the 7x. On the left-hand side, I've got 8x minus 7x. How much is that going to give us? 1x. 1x or x. Right. We don't have to put the 1 up there. We're just going to put x. Anything else we have to do? Hey, you're done. X is 4. You can still check your work. You plug that in there. If you plug in 4 in both places where X is, we get our 32. We get 28 plus 4, which is 32. That means we have a valid solution. It's a true statement. Why don't you try one of these on your own, okay? Okay. Plus 9x. 10x equals negative 2 plus 9x. see what happens here. Of course, we do have an equation, right? That's why we have the equal sign up there. But then we start noticing that instead of having a variable surrounded by some numbers, we've got two of those variable expressions, two of those variable terms up there. We're going to try to eliminate the smaller one. The reason why, again, we do that is to get the variable on one side of our equation. If you don't have that, you cannot solve it. So that's, that's our reason for doing the getting rid of the smaller variable. What's the smaller variable here? How are you going to get rid of 9x? Sure. We subtract from both sides. We'll get x equals negative 2. That's our final answer. How many we got x equals negative 2? Good, good, good. Two x equals ten. You might be able to do this one in your head, but let's think through this about solving this equation. Um, is there any amount of adding or subtracting that's going to allow us to get x by itself in this case? Um, subtract two. Can we add or subtract to solve it? No. Really? What's it mean that two x? Yeah, that means two times x. So. So what we're thinking is, we knew we did addition and subtraction because we were undoing addition and subtraction, right? Addition undid subtraction, subtraction undid addition. But now when we get up here, we have multiplication division. Does subtraction undo multiplication? No. Not really. What would undo multiplication? Division. Let's try to divide. Add or subtract won't work for a problem here. When we look at this, this says 2 times x, right? We want to undo everything that's around our variable. So if our variable is x, we want to get rid of that 2 somehow. I can't subtract it. If I just subtract 2, you know what happened? Watch. If you subtract 2, what you're going to get is 2x minus 2. That's what you're going to get. 
you can't take the 2 away from that 2x. It doesn't work that way. They're not like terms we're going to talk about in chapter 3 in about maybe 10 minutes. We can't subtract 2 from it. The only thing we could possibly do is undo multiplication by what, what's the opposite of multiplication? Division. Division. Addition is the opposite of subtraction, right? Subtraction is the opposite of addition. What we're trying to do is find the opposite of multiplication. We're undoing whatever operation is there. So if our operation is multiplication, we need division to undo that. With multiplication, okay. you use. Yes. Yeah, whatever operation is opposite of the one you want to get rid of. So if you have division, which we're going to cover in just a second, yeah, we're going to use multiplication for that. If you have multiplication, we're using division. If you have addition, we're using subtraction. If you have subtraction, we're using addition. So whatever is the inverse operation is what that's called. The opposite of what you're dealing with, that's what we're using. So in our case, we know that division undoes multiplication. And likewise, multiplication will undo division for us. Hey, do you remember uh, when we did addition? I said that what you add to one side, you also have to add to the other side. But if you do that, then it's going to be equal. Do you remember talking about that? That was the addition property of equality. We said pretty much no matter what, as long as you do the same thing to both sides of an equation, where the equal sign tells you the side, whatever you do, it's still going to be a valid equation. It's still going to be just fine. The same thing holds true for multiplication and division. We can multiply or divide to both sides of an equation with the same number. We can multiply or divide either one, both sides of an equation by the same number, and it's still true. So back to our 2x equals 10. We got 2x equals 10. We know that addition or subtraction doesn't undo the multiplication which we need to get rid of. We're still looking to get the x by itself. So we'll draw our line. We'll try to get rid of that 2. What's going to undo the times 2? We just talked about that. We'll divide by how much? Is that good enough? Yeah. We, both sides. we do. Okay, we do. Now we're dealing with our division. By the way, why does this work? Do you know why that works? Do you know why this even works? Have you seen that ever? Would you like to see it real quick? Sure. Here's why this works. It deals with a little bit of fractions, so you have to know one thing about fractions. For right now, you'll just have to trust me on it. Uh, but in the future, I'll show you legitimately why, how using fractions we do this. So, the two x over two. I want you to watch something. 2x over 2 is the same thing as, you don't have to write this down, just watch, okay? 2 times x over 2. Do you believe me? Yeah. That's no. 2 times x, thanks Jeff, over <laughs> 2 times 1. You believe that? Yeah. Yeah. 2 times x, 2 times 1, right? 2 times 1 is still 2. Whenever you have multiplication of a numerator and denominator, you can split those fractions up however you want them. So I'm going to split this up as 2 over 2 times x over 1. Do you believe that? Mm -hmm. How much is 2 divided by 2? 1. How much is x divided by 1? X. x. How much is 1 times x? x? That's why that works. So when we divide a number by itself, really what we're doing is we're creating 1 and multiplying by that 1. That's the reason why to get rid of multiplication, you have to divide. Do you see it now? That's the reasoning. This is it. So when we do this, we go, oh, okay, normally your teacher just tells you, oh, okay, you just cross those out. Yay, we're having fun, right? This is the reason why, though. I mean, we're, never gonna, we're not going to show this. 
we're just going to cross out the number. But I want you to understand why we can do that is because we're actually dividing 2 by 2 and making a 1 out of that and multiplying by 1. Do you follow? Yeah. Okay, good. So what is left on the left-hand side of our equation? 10 divided by 2. On the left-hand side of our equation. Oh, on the right-hand side, yeah, we have 10 divided by 2. Let's do that. What is 10 divided by 2? Uh, Perfect. Now, can you plug that in and check your solution? Yes. At least in your head you should be doing that. So we plug this back in. 2 times 5 is 10. Hey, that's true. We get this one right. Let's keep going off you. We'll do several more together. I'll give you a few to do on your own. We'll talk about um, one more, for instance, on these equations, and then we'll be good to go for uh, chapter 2. Negative 7 y equals 35. Ladies and gentlemen, am I supposed to add, subtract, multiply, or divide? What do you think? Why won't addition work here? Because you know a lot of people go, well, there's a minus right up front. Oh, that's right. It's a negative 7. So it's actually negative 7 times y. So we need to get rid of the negative 7 times y. And we're going to do, what was that again? What are you going to divide by? Positive 7. seven. seven. Positive, seven. positive 7. Okay. Let's see what would happen. I want you to notice this. We're going to try positive 7. Please watch on the board. If you try positive 7, you're sure enough going to get 5 over here. But I want you to look at this. Is there anything that's going to eliminate that negative? No. Uh -huh. So if you divide it by positive 7, please watch carefully, what you would end with, that negative doesn't just magically disappear, right? You're not Harry Potter with your math wand and disappearing negatives, that'd be awesome. But you'd actually get negative y out of that. Do you want negative y? No. What do you want? Positive y. Well, positive y. That's right. Well, positive y. If ever you do this and you get down here, don't lose your negative. You can just say if negative y equals 5, y equals negative 5. That's true. You would divide by a negative. However, to make this a little bit easier, to can I kind of see that, what we're going to do is divide by the exact same number that you have in front of your y. The negative has to be included. And the reason why we do that, if you think back to my example over here, what's going to create 1? Is this going to create a positive 1? That's going to create negative 1. That's going to create positive 1. Negative divided by negative is a positive. Are you with me on this? Yes. That's why we divide by exactly the same number. So whatever you have in front of your variable, you're dividing by exactly that, including the sign. Raise your hand if you understand that. Good, OK. So in our case, yes, these, this negative 7 and this negative 7 are exactly the same. They create a positive 1 for us. We get y on the right-hand side, 35 divided by negative 7. What do we get, ladies and gentlemen? Good. You're using the multiplication rules, aren't you? Because we're multiplying and dividing. That's awesome. So we need to know when we're adding subtracting, use addition rules. When we're multiplying and dividing, we use multiplication rules. And our answer is negative 5. You could still plug it in, couldn't you? Negative 7 times negative 5. Hey, that's positive 35. You must have done it right. Three x equals negative eighteen. Ladies and gentlemen, what are you going to do to solve this problem? Divide, Divide by what, please? Three. You mean one side or both sides? Both. So when I'm dividing, should I divide by positive three here and negative three over here on the right hand side, or no. the same? Thing? Okay. So same thing, no matter what. This creates our one for us. That's why we can get rid of it. That's why we did that step, because we're dividing 3 by 3. That's making a 1. I showed you that on that example. And on the right-hand side, how much do we get? Negative 6. Perfect. Always be checking your answers, at least in your head also. Plug that back in. Do the 3 times negative 6. Verify that's equal to negative 18. And then you know you get the right answer. Does it still work if I put the variable on the other side of the equation? Is that still OK? Yeah. So on our problem here, are we still going to divide? Mm -hmm. What are we going to divide by? 
Perfect. So if we divide both sides by 4, it doesn't really matter where the variable is. We still can create that 1. We still do our division rule over there. Negative 32 divided by 4 is how much, folks? Negative 8. Let's do one more together. I'll give you something to do on your own, and then we'll move on to um, some division. So last one, we still have that equation. So we still have both sides of this thing. Now we're looking at this. Our variable is on which side? Yeah, left side. OK. How are we going to get rid of what we need to get rid of in this case? Perfect. So we, we are divided by the negative in this case, right? Yes. So exactly what's in front of our x, that's what we're divided by. <coughs> Here, what's going to happen on the left-hand side? What happens? Good. Why? Very good. And 5 divided by 5 equals how much? Good. That's why this whole thing even works. You're creating a 1 on that division. That's leaving you with an x because you didn't touch the x. On the right-hand side, how much are we going to get? Positive or negative? Good. Again, you're using that, the division multiplication rules, right? Because that's what we're doing. I'd like you to try some on your own. They won't take you very long, but make sure you're showing your work. Okay, if you're not showing your work, I take points off for that, especially on your test. So make sure that you're showing your work on this. But right now, some of, you, some of you are pretty good at math in your head. And you can look at this and go, well, yeah, I mean, obviously it's going to be A, duh. But I want to see the work because later on, trust me, you're not going to be able to do this in your head. Right? If, you, if you think you can, I can show you some examples where you can't. Okay? Believe me. So getting this groundwork down, showing your steps now, is really going to benefit you later on. Are you with me on that? Yeah. Okay. All right, so let's try these. Let's show our work on this. I'll be walking around. If you're struggling with this stuff, raise your hand, let me know, and I'll come around and help you. 5y equals negative 30, 42 equals negative 7a, negative 2x equals negative 34, negative 12y equals, let's make that 48. And negative 36 equals negative 4z. Okay, I see lots of good work so far. That's great. Let's take about another minute to wrap this thing up, and then we'll get started.
So I like to draw that vertical line to tell me what I do on one side. I have to do the exact same thing on the other side. That way, if ever I'm not matched up, I know I'm doing something wrong. So on our first one, we have 5y equals negative 30. What are we going to do to solve 5y equals negative 30? And we get y equals how much? Perfect. Next one, we notice our variables on the right-hand side. We have that negative 7 being multiplied by a. We're going to divide both sides by negative 7. That's the only way that we're going to create a positive a over here. Notice we still have the same exact thing. Negative sevens are gone. That's why we did that step to create a 1. 1 times a just gives us a. That's why that whole thing works. We do 42 divided by negative 7. Hopefully, you got negative 6. Are these all going to be negative 6? No. no. Next up, we got negative 2x equals negative 34. Again, we got a negative times that variable. We need to get rid of that negative 2. Since it's being multiplied, we're going to divide. That's the operation that undoes multiplication for us. So when we divide by negative 2, of course our negative 2's are gone, we're creating 1. Negative 2 over negative 2 gives us positive 1. That's going to leave us with just an x. On the right-hand side, however, we have negative 34 divided by negative 2. Negative over negative gives us a positive by our multiplication slash division rules. We're going to get 17. Same thing happens with this. We, are, we do need to divide by our negative 12. Negative 12s are going to create that positive 1, giving us a y. On the right-hand side, we have 48 divided by negative 12. Again, multiplication division rules tell us two different signs. We're going to end with a positive or negative here. Negative. Good. Negative. Four. And last step. Our variable is back on the right-hand side of our equation. We do have to get rid of that negative 4. Because it's being multiplied, we do have to divide both sides by negative 4. When we do that, we'll cross that out because it's creating a positive 1, leaving us with a z. And over here, we have a negative over negative again. We're going to get positive 9. Positive 9 out of 5. How many we got all five of those correct? Good for you. That's fantastic. Were you checking your work as you were going through it? Were you plugging those in to the, to the original equation? Good. Now there's one more thing we can talk about. You see, we've had equations where we've added things on and subtracted, and we've had now where we've multiplied, we got rid of that. We haven't really talked about division. Let's take a look at what that looks like. That way when you get your homework, you're like, oh, well, that's not so bad, because you're going to have some of this on that section 2.6. So how's the division look? Oh, when we deal with division in equations, typically it's not given us to us with that divide sign. We, we really don't see that a whole lot. What we see is a fraction. And so we're going to see some things that look like fractions. For example, like that. Hey, does that still mean x divided by 5? Does it mean, what's the fraction mean? It does mean divide, right? Yeah. Fraction means divide. Just like we did over here, right? We actually created fractions. We created fractions right here. Negative 40 over negative 5, that just means divided by. So this means the same thing. So tell me something. If we used addition to get rid of subtraction, and subtraction to get rid of addition, and division to get rid of multiplication, what are we going to do to get rid of this division? Multiply. That's all we got to know, is that multiplication is going to undo our division for us, just like division undid our multiplication. What do we need to multiply by, though? Is it negative 3 or is it 5? What do you think? 5. What is the 5? Look where your variable's at. Our variable's on the left-hand side. We're trying to get rid of everything around that variable. If we're dividing by 5, the way we get rid of dividing by 5 is, let's multiply by 5. Let me show you something real quick. <clears throat> Again, I'll show you why this works. If you'd like to see, do you want to see why it works? Okay. If you don't care, we'll just kind of zone up for a while. You should care, though. It's kind of cool. Here's why this works. If you really think about this as a fraction, I hope that you know that 5 is the same thing as 5 over 1. Did you know that? How you multiply fractions, that I'm going ahead of the game here, but I'm going to show this to you now because I think it's important. 
um, how you multiply fractions is we simply multiply the tops and the bottoms, or in other words, our numerators and our denominators. So here's what you could do. You could say this is the same thing as 5 times x over 1 times 5. That's the only part you're going to have to believe me on. Do you believe me on that, that that's true? Yeah. Next up, what we do, since multiplication is commutative, it means I could switch these around, which means I could have 5 times x over 5 times 1. Do you believe that? Yeah. And then we're in the same situation that we just had. This is 5 over 5 times x over 1. 5 over 5 is 1 times x or x. So in this way, you can prove that multiplication actually undoes division for you. It's the same basic idea after you get down to this part. Did you follow that? Yes. Good. So it does work out for us. Basically, if you got division, just multiply both sides by that same number. So if we multiply by 5 and we multiply by 5, what's going to happen is we know these 5s are going to be gone. We just, like, just proved it. But you like fraction out it's like fraction, and we'll talk about simplification later on. I haven't shown you that. Uh, for right now, what you need, need to know is that multiplication undoes the division portion of this problem. Are you cross canceling? We're simplifying, yeah. But again, I have I can't talk about simplifying yet because I haven't even covered fractions. Um, so I, I kind of went ahead of the game here and, and to show you this. But essentially, yes, that's what you're doing. You're, you're going to simplify those numbers. So our 5 divided by 5, that still gives us 1. On the right-hand side, what are we going to be left with? Negative 15. Sure, we know how to multiply some numbers together. And that's our answer. Let's try another one together, then I'll give you two more on your own, and we'll talk about chapter 3. y over negative 2 equals 8. Hey, what are we trying to get rid of in this example? Now, negative 2, how are we going to get rid of negative 2? Multiply. Why are we going to multiply? What now? Well, why are we going to multiply? I know we're going to multiply by something. Why are we doing that? Yeah, that's right. We have division right now. We want to multiply because that's the opposite of division. That's the inverse. That's what's going to undo that. The question is, what do we need to multiply by? Should I multiply by 8, negative 8, 2, or negative 2? What do you think? Negative 2. Okay. Why not positive 2? Uh, this is the same situation as if you didn't divide by the negative right here. If you divided by positive 7, you still have negative y. Do you remember talking about that like a couple minutes ago? Same thing would happen here. If you don't multiply by negative 2, your negative will not go away. And you, you can't just magically make it go away. So if we multiply by negative 2 on the left-hand side, of course we do kind of mean negative 2 over 1. Those 2's are going to simplify to make a 1. Negative 2 over negative 2 gives us that positive 1. That leaves us with our y. But on the right hand side, what do I need to do as well? Divide. Divide? Multiply. multiply. Then we get to do the same thing on both sides. So if we multiply it over here, we're also going to have to multiply over here by the same number. What number was that? Eight. I'm putting that in parentheses to show that I'm multiplying, not subtracting. How much are we going to get? Guess what? These equations still work if you, tr if you plug the number back in. If you plug in negative 16, negative 16 divided by negative 2, sure enough, that is positive 8. Why don't you just, when you look at a problem like that, just go ahead and multiply uh, negative 2 times 8. And that gives you the answer, right? That's what we're doing. Yeah, instead of going through all the other stuff. Yeah, it's the stuff is the stuff you need to know. Yeah. It's it's the we get into the later. Exactly. You guys together are like me. That's awesome. Yeah. Because yes, that that is what we're, what we're doing, Kevin. Right? That is what we're doing. We're we're multiplying here on both sides uh, to show that over on our left hand side, we're actually creating. I showed you on this example. We're creating a positive one. We're multiplying positive one times y. That's why this one step works. 
uh, we, what we do to the left-hand side, we do to the right-hand side. That's why we have the negative 2 here. So yeah, that, that is what we're doing. Um, but I just need you to show it. That's all. I would like you to try three on your own right now. This is going to wrap up our section. Let's make sure we get these ones right. If you're really kind of a little bit not getting this, let me know as I'm walking around. I will definitely help you out. Okay. So we look at our problem. Of course we have division problems up here. We have our variables being divided by a number. In order to get rid of that division, we of course have to use multiplication. All you need to realize is that we're multiplying by exactly the same number that our problem is divided by. So here, when we are divided by negative 4, to undo that divided by negative 4, we need to multiply by negative 4. Of course, we show that on both sides, and the reason why this works again is because positive 4 divided by negative 4, well, that creates positive 1. That le I'm sorry, negative 4 divided by negative 4 creates a positive 1. That leaves us with our variable of z. On the right-hand side, I hope that you got negative 36. Did you get negative 36? Yeah. Awesome. Good. Why, why negative 36? Well, 9 times negative 4 is negative 36. We don't have to show that we cross cancel over time no more now that we know on. What now? We want to show like how to get the Z. You have to show how to get the Z. Why? Well, a better reason than because I said so is because uh, we're, you're going to be doing a lot more complex steps later on. Not only that, when you get to math C, you're going to have problems that look a lot like this. lot of problems that look like that. That's chapter 7. That's actually a review from math A. So in math A class, towards the end of your semester, you're going to be doing things like this. Okay, this is solving rational equations. If you don't know how to do this and show your work on this, you will not be able to do this. I promise you. I promise. Um, so I have to be able to get you to do these steps before I can let you do things like this. Do you understand now? Okay. The way you do this is kind of fun, but it involves, it involves some, a lot of the processes you learn in this class to do this stuff. No, don't stress out. But when you get there, you'll, you'll know it. Right? Trust me, you'll, you'll know it when you get there. Uh, but for right now, this is the reason why I have you show your steps. Because right now it's like, oh yeah, this is very easy to do in your head. This might be very easy for you to do in your head. So of course. Math C? This is the very first chapter of Math C. Oh. So how far are we from, away from that? The next class is, well, you have to complete this class. Then you have Math A, which builds you up towards some of this stuff. Towards the end of the semester of Math A, you'll be dealing with a little bit more like this. And then Math C starts here, and then we run through a whole bunch of good stuff. Yeah. And then you go into Math 2, and then you go into Calculus. 
then calculus two, calculus three, differential equations, linear algebra, uh, math 15, math 10, then however far you want. Then the sky's the limit. Isn't that awesome? Is that calculus is actually pretty good though. I like calculus. After the 5x, is that a plus 5 or is that a plus 6? Don't write this down. It's fine. <laughs> but we're not doing this right now. Can I try it? You can, you can, but it's a minus 6. Minus 6? That would work out. Okay. Anyway, that's a very long way to give an answer of show your steps. Anyway. So moving on, we do have the x over negative 3. Of course, we're going to be multiplying by whatever we've divided by. Multiply both sides by negative 3. In this case, we have x and we have positive 21. Did you get positive 21? Yeah. Awesome. And last one, of course, we need to multiply by 5. That means on both sides. We get y and we get negative 60. How many people feel pretty good about multiplication and division? Good. Solving equations in general, you feel okay with that? Awesome. Before we can go any further in solving equations, we've got to talk about some chapter 3 stuff. You see, these are, these are very basic equations for us. They're only one-steppers. Um, in the future, we're going to have several steps involved in solving these equations. But before we can do that, we have to talk about how to simplify some expressions. 